everybody, welcome <laughs> back. I'm with Tianyu Bear. We're talking motor racing on the other side of a brilliant local weekend yeah. of racing out at Kalani International yeah. Raceway. Uh, it was lekker to see the, uh, the, the everyone out supporting local racing, Dion. Yeah, no, we had a, a, a very good day and it was an interesting mix between, you know, multi-millionaires racing their yeah. Lamborghinis and Ferraris and, uh, and Porsches and the youngsters uh, making their way up in, uh, and, and a lot of these kids I've watched during karting, um, so I'll mention some names at the risk of leaving some out. Sure, and unfortunately, <laughs> you know, we'd, we'd love to mention but, uh, everybody, so yeah, in the future yeah, yeah. watch the space. Yeah. We, we, but we've got a, a brilliant crop of youngsters coming yeah. through, and the interesting thing is that every, I always say every generation is actually better than the preceding one in sure. some way, because they build on the shoulders of those people. So these guys have been training riding yeah. karts since they were four years old, yeah. And uh, it's absolutely magnificent to watch them drive. You know, yeah. people like uh, like Tate Bishop, uh, Troy Dolanchek, uh, Shaw Fisher. Um, as I said, at the risk, I mean, these all Cape Tonys. Uh, absolutely. Um, 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 uh, Leighton Free. Uh, yes, the guys are driving well. Yeah. And um, the other thing is, uh, we had an old driver return. Rechad Roots popped into the GTC series and did extremely well. Um, so yeah, so it was a, a great race meeting to watch. Yeah. Dion, what does it take, and we've touched on this before, to race locally uh, in terms of financing? What do you in mean terms locally? Of support? You, let's look at Kalani. You're based you in mean, Cape Town. Uh, you mean you want to go and a race Clubman's locally. type of... Clubman's type. Let's start at Clubman's. Because I think yeah. Clubman's is a very good entry level to, to racing and to the sport. And at this stage, when you look at the price associated with racing anyway, yeah. Clubman's is still doable. It's well, still okay. Clubman's is exactly what it says. Yeah. It's, it's for... It, it, and it's not necessarily exactly like us, but it's for somebody that just wants to race. Got you. And the rules are very open. So okay. that... So that Anybody can uh, take part, you don't need new tires or whatever. But I still think you're going to be spending 5,000 in a race, gotcha. something like that, yeah. um, if you do all the work yourself. Yeah. You know? um, and you find a lot of people at racing have businesses that have to do with cars sure. because it's easy for them to plug Absolutely. the car into that business. Yeah. Um, and then there also are about four or five providers of car. Uh, the maintenance of the cars, they sure. work for a whole lot of people yes. at Kiloni. That's so nice. the, the simplest way perhaps to race then is to find somebody that you enjoy that's yeah. had a hell of a long racing career, Brian Maunda, um, Nian, uh, uh, the toys at Kiloni, and Dion. they have workshops. Other Dion. Nian. Uh? A Dion as well. Yeah, they have workshops there and that you can leave your car with them yeah. and they'll prepare it for you. Yeah. And, and because of their massive experience, the car doesn't break all the time because yeah. once you start, when you start with something, you have to learn the mechanics of sure. that thing and what is it that actually breaks all Absolutely. the time. And how can I fix it? Cost yeah, then you have to fix it yourself sure. and so on. And you need a garage to work in yeah, and that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a cost-effective way. Take one step back from that, yeah. karting. And uh, it, it's expensive. I mean, there's no motorsport that isn't expensive. <laughs> but yeah. the right way to do it, we see Formula One drivers, and we yes. know, and we chatted last time about there being a break in the season. Yeah. But they cut their teeth on, you know, in karting. Karting's yeah. massive in Cape Town. It's, it's massive in South Africa. It's, it's, it's not something to be taken lightly. Sure. Because you will invest your whole Everything. life into it. Yeah. Um, and um, but but having said that, I mean, I was having a. Long ago, I was having a chat to Mark de Nobrega about the money that he spent on his kids, and Mark's my age. Yeah. And he said to me, but Dion, it was the best years of my life. Yeah. And, and the one thing that's different about karting to other sports is that the son needs the parent to be involved. Sure. So he has to step up because uh, you can play rugby without your parents. Got you. you can swim without your parents. Yes. You can do all the other sports because yeah. the, the schools and so on support it. Yeah. And you don't even really see those children, but with go-karting, the fathers are there and they're interacting with their child and it's like, you've done five laps, why are you slower, what's going on? Sure. You even have to uh, be the psychologist for the kid. Absolutely. Because um, they, they have meltdowns. Absolutely. They, they literally... Mentally uh, you've got to help them yeah. through the process so if of your kid's crying all the time, um, yeah. um, you've got to understand why. Yes. You know, and then you've got to deal with him like a sports psychologist in a way. You know? uh, absolutely. So, so, um, so, so karting... It's, it's amazing. Why, why do you think that in the 80s and 90s when you raced, there, there seemed to be a lot more investment in terms of big corporates getting behind series, right? Oh, and, that's and, a and, very big... It's a, and you, it's you, gone. Yeah. I, it's gone. I, I, I mean, we don't get... I remember as a kid, 
watching Porsche Cup, for example, mm. right? And being and all the manufacturers were involved, and we had Vodacom oh, in the sport, and a whole lot of other everyone, sponsors. Everyone West Bank, was involved. Jeez, it was, it I was think I think it's been a, sh a, sh it's a shift uh, in the demographics of the country. It's not that these companies aren't spending money sure. anymore. Somehow, motorsport became uh, a stepchild or, or a sport that we didn't want to associate with because right. it was elitist. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I think that it's actually, in a weird way, isn't it? Isn't yeah. you know? So. Um, but I, I think it's ready for investment into yes. it. I, th I think it's going to shift again yeah. um, because one thing about live motorsport yeah. is it's nice to watch. This. You see the speed. Sure. Um, I remember going to rugby. I'm not. Uh, uh, I remember going to a rugby game and I don't go a lot. And I was in the Boma or the whatever they call it. Yeah. And I didn't notice that the game had started. But when a mud race starts, you know, you about, know about it, it. because you're there. It. It's noise yeah. and the visual speed of the cars, you know, I, I yeah. still see that and then you hear the noise. Yeah. So going you to a mud race. You smell the, the petrol, you smell the yes. motor oil. It's yes, yes. a very visceral experience right. going and to motor Kilani, racing. And um, Kilani uh, has been changed quite a bit for the for the World Rallycross and that. Yes. So the spectators are really safe, but it's still, you're still very close to the action and it's still yeah. very a, a, a small track, which works very well for our local racing. So Glenn Hall uh, of Nissan Motorsport told me once that a lap time of a, of a circuit needs to be around 1 minute 10, 1 minute 20, because it makes the cars come around a lot. Sure. And Kilani has two straights. Um, so everywhere you are, you, you're getting, you hear you're the noise, noise. And, and that, you know, so you see the cars. The old Kailami circuit, for instance, you could see the cars almost all the way around. Yeah. The new Kailami, they disappear. Yeah. And also it's quite a long lap. Yes. So um, so Kilani and some of our other club circuits, Port Elizabeth, East London is a beautiful place yeah. to watch motor racing from. Yes. Um, um, yeah, anyway, so what we what did I answer you now? We were just talking <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a corporate investment in, into the sport. So the, the other big thing about about uh, um, motorsport in a way is that it's paid for by the participants. Sure. Everybody that comes to the track yeah. actually has as some ability to be there. Sure. They're employing people, they have businesses. So when you interact with, with the racing owners, yeah. the car, anybody, if you said a clubman driver, that guy still has some extra money. Absolutely. So he's an influential person for yeah. a company to be approaching. Absolutely. Uh, you know, because he's got say eight cell phone contracts that he's paying for or yeah. you know, and then as you go up, it's bigger, you know. Listen, this is a, a good time of anyone's life to be asking corporates to get involved in motor racing, to create, uh, or rather to chip into a family that is constantly out there, putting their own finances to use by breeding the next generation of future Dion Your Bears. Um, the good news is, is it's never too late for you to put your hand up as a corporate and get involved and help out on a local level. To everyone that's maybe thinking of motorsport as a hobby or letting your kids get involved, be warned like any sport, it's gonna cost you a hell of a lot of money, but know that when you come down to the track, the one thing that's for sure, whether you're a novice or a pro, you feel accepted in the community of people that are there for the same reason. Absolutely. And that's to love motorsport, yeah. to engage in motorsport, to see said. it grow in South Africa. Yeah. Dion, you'll be able to chat again soon. Bye.